Hello and welcome. Welcome to Tool Chest with Clover. I'm Geraldine Wilkins, the Living Water Quilter. We are going to go over some more tools, tools that we can use for our craft and sewing projects that we should have in our tool chest. What tools are we going to look at today? Now, if you're on YouTube, welcome. But guess what? We are also live on Amazon. And why are we live on Amazon? We're live on Amazon so that you can get quick and easy access to these tools so that you can incorporate them in your tool chest. So hello to my friends on YouTube, on the Clover YouTube channel, and hello to my friends on Amazon. What is the first tool we're going to look at? Let's take a look at first all of the ones that we're going to look at by Clover. Let's look at them one by one, and then we'll look at each one in particular. This is the roll and press. We're going to look at that. We're going to look at the thread cutter and pendant, the sweet and sharp macaron, a thimble, the wonder pins, and a pair of sharp patchwork scissors. So let's look at it according to our carousel on Amazon. Below the video, you'll see some products there. We're going to look at the first one, and the first one is the clover sweet and sharp macaron let's look at that one up close i'll move these to the side for a moment hello let me double check and look at youtube to say hello to my friends hello debbie so glad that you're here welcome welcome let us know if you have any questions any questions at all we will be happy to answer any questions you have about clover tools and that's why we are here. So this is the Sweet and Sharp Macaron. Have you heard of this? Do you know what this does? This is an amazing tool that you need, <laughs> and I say need, in your tool chest. If you do hand sewing, you need a tool that's going to help keep your needles sharp. So here it is. This is what it looks like. And it's called the Sweet and Sharp Macaron. It's actually after a dessert. I'm sure you've heard of macaroons made of coconut, but there's also a dessert called a macaron. And it has two cakes on one side, and then there's a filling. Usually it's raspberry or lime or other flavors. So this one has a filling. This particular tool has a filling. But that filling is not something you eat. <laughs> it's something you use to sharpen your scissors. Hello, so glad you're here. I'm from Poland. Fantastic. Wow. Amazing. So glad you're here. So if you do handwork, this is some handwork that I've been in the process of completing. And I need a nice sharp needle. Needles can get dull over time, not just the tip, but also the shaft of the needle. And that's where the macaron comes into play. I love, uh, let's see if I can do something here. Uh, let's see. There's a little comment here I need to take care of. Uh, see done I'm not sure why I'm not able to do that let's see uh, let's see hello hello from Poland so glad you're here I'm sorry that I am delayed here and responding I'm trying to do something here on Amazon. You know, there are people here who don't have enough time on their hands that they need to come and do stuff that's impolite. So anyway, here's the needle. And with the sharp macaron, what you're going to do, sweet and sharp, is you're going to insert the needle and that's going to sharpen the tip. And when you pull it in and out, 
it sharpens or cleans off any residue on the shaft of the needle. So every time I insert the needle and pull it out, I am sharpening the tip and cleaning off the shaft of the needle. And as I do that, and it gets sharpened, I am easily able to pierce the fabric now when I use the needle to go through the fabric. This is an amazing tool to help us use a nice sharp needle when we're doing hand work. Easy, easy, easy. That's what we wanna do. We wanna make sure that our needles stay sharp so that our sewing, hand sewing is easier and it cleans off the shaft. Sometimes we can get a little residue right here on the needle and we don't want that. That's gonna impede our ability to go through the fabric. And that's what this does. Fantastic tool. If you don't have it, it's something you wanna add to your tool chest. So what's the next thing we're gonna look at? It's in the carousel and that is a thimble. When we use a thimble with our hand sewing, it's going to save the tip of our finger, right? It's going to save our finger. Instead of the end of the needle being pushed by our finger, we're going to have a metal tip. This metal tip, see that? It has nice little grooves on it. It's a metal tip so that when I use it for hand sewing and I need to push the needle through, let's try this. Now I have to confess, I do not do a lot of hand sewing, thus this project is still in the works. But now I want to bring the needle through the fabric, so I'm gonna use the end of the thimble and then I can pull it through. That way I save the tip of my finger and I don't have to use the needle against my flesh, my finger. Now what's neat about this thimble too is that it's, it's scalloped. Do you see the scallops on there? That's so that it's breathable. Air can get in and out of the thimble. I like having a thimble that's going to help me make it easier to sew. So those are two tools that we're using for hand sewing that we should have in our tool chest. We want something to keep our needles sharp and that's the sweet and sharp macaron. And then when we are ready to start to sew again, we're going to use the thimble to help us maneuver the needle through the fabric. So I'm doing some hand sewing right here and I want to bring the needle through. I'm going to use the end of this thimble. And this is called a protect and grip thimble. The size I'm using is a medium. And now I'm able to get it through very easily. Now, when you look for the size on the packaging, there's a hole. This is going to tell you if the, the thimble size is right for you. It's a size guide. And it's, this part is very flexible, easy to use. All right, any questions? Any questions? I'm happy to answer any questions. These are two tools for hand sewing I think are must haves. What's next? Let me put this over here. We have this very interesting Pendant. This is the, let me go in really tight here. This is a thread cutter pendant. See all those grooves along there? Those grooves, in between those grooves, there's a blade. There's a blade inside that. That's what you're going to use to cut the thread. What makes this a pendant is this section right here. You see that hole? That's where you're going to put your necklace or chain through and you can wear this then around your neck as you're sewing, as you're doing hand sewing. The other thing that you can do, if you don't put it on the pendant, you can place it right inside the spool. 
just like that. So as you're doing your hand sewing, or you need to thread a needle, let's see if I can get the thread off of here. Any questions, uh, Tuxedo Cat? Any questions, Debbie, any questions? I can't seem to get this thread. It's nice and tight around this spool. Uh, let's see. Got that locked in there pretty tight. Let's see here. I'm going to pull it like that. There we go. All right. All right, finally, the thread is um, taken out. And if I had this thread on a, a needle and I was ready to use it and I wanted to remove it from the spool, I could use the pendant to do that. Because remember, along the edge, all those indentations, there's a blade. So I just bring the thread right through that and it cuts the thread. So now the thread has been cut off and I can use it when it's attached to a needle. I can use it to um, easily cut the thread in between. That's why it's convenient to have that. Let me bring that up really close. So I'm going to pull that and it cuts. So easy. I love having tools that are convenient and make it easy for me to get through any specific task that I'm working on. And hand sewing, there are a lot of different tools, and I think this is one that would work well for travel. Easy to travel with, right? Something that's going to cut your thread if you don't want to use a pair of scissors. This will do the job. This is the Thread Cutter and Pendant. And you can see on the packaging, it shows you pendant on this side and then how you can rest it inside of a spool. Easy, easy. All right. Now, I did mention scissors, didn't I? We are looking at some clover patchwork scissors today. These are sharp scissors. These are the mini scissors. It comes with a sheath, a protective sheath, because look at that tip. It is a sharp tip, right? So Debbie says that she has the pendant and she puts it on a lanyard. Wonderful. That's a great idea, Debbie. I like that. It has a lobster claw. Look at the sheath for that. Nice and sharp scissors. And we want to have a good variety of scissors in our tool chest. Something that's small like this is going to be good for not only cutting thread, right? We want to use it to cut threads. We can cut threads off of fabric. Let's take a piece of fabric here. And if this was a patchwork piece and we want to remove just a couple of pieces of thread, we can do that very easily but it can also cut easily through multiple layers. Or if you're doing applique and you want to say, cut out this circle and you want to do it very easily and gently, the scissors are so sharp, the size of the scissors, the a big and bulky scissors would be difficult to use if you want to do nice, clean, sharp cuts on a small piece of fabric. You want something that's gonna be small, just like these scissors. And look how sharp. It's going through this very easily, no problem at all. I love that. That quickly, I was able to cut a pretty decent circle with these patchwork scissors. And did I mention that it cuts through multiple layers very easily? Let's trim that off and trim that off. I'll put these two pieces together. So that's two. 
and that's going to cut right through that very easily. Now I have two on each hand. I'm going to put those together and it's going to cut through four layers very easily. So if you're doing applique that has um, a backing on it, like a steam -a seam or some other adhesive backing, it's not going to be a problem to cut through those multiple layers. And the tip, that tip I like because then you can get in very tight areas in applique. Sometimes you have some nice sharp turns that you have to, or corners that you have to get into. Like if you wanted to trim out, cut out this tree and you want it to be very as accurate as you can by doing it by hand, that nice tip is going to work in that tight area very easily, right? Let me do it this side. Very easy to get into those nice tight corners. I like tools that are going to be perfect for the specific task. Big and bulky scissors wouldn't work in this instance, and these are so sharp that it's so easy to get in there and accurately trim around this tree. Easy, easy. I don't know how many of you do applique out there, but if you do applique or any other fine work where you need to cut around something, you want to have a good pair of sharp scissors that are the right size. Okay. And of course, when you're done, for safety, always put the sheath back on. That's it, right? Good thing to do. All right, let's clean this up a little bit. What is next for our tool chest? What else can we use when we're doing patchwork? We want to have nicely pressed seams when we're doing patchwork. And with the rolling press, there's multiple ways that we can press, right? We can press with heat, cold press, meaning no heat. We can press, when we're using heat, we can use steam or no steam. But with a cold press, and that's what I call this, a cold press, no heat, we want to be able to flatten our seams out very easily, right? Nice flat seams. And I like to use the rolling press by my sewing machine before I hot press my blocks so that I can continue to sew. I will press the seams, whether I'm pressing them to one side or I'm pressing them open. I'm able to continue to sew the entire quilt block by using... A cold press. Now, did you notice the curves in this? Look how my finger goes right inside this nice curve. That curve works perfectly for applying the right pressure so that I can press those seams on both sides to get them nice and flat. This part rolls very easily smooth, smooth, smooth. It's a smooth surface and my finger fits right in there so that I can press those seams. Roll and press. And I think if you know, notice that I'm not saying iron. Even if I was using a iron, when we use a pressing tool for patchwork, the idea is that we want to press, meaning press downward. We don't want to iron or press too hard because then our blocks can be distorted. So make sure that when you're using, whether it's this cold press, roll and press tool, that you're pressing downward and not stretching the fabric so that your block remains the right size. So perfect tool for pressing. I have this right by my sewing machine. Roll and press. Now once we finished our block and it's been pressed and we want to put it in a quilt or make 
a quilt sandwich. This is our backing fabric. Here's our batting. Now we have our quilted star, our quilt block. We want to quilt it. And what do we need? Ladies, what do we need? We need some <clears throat> way to baste the quilt block to the sandwich so that we can prepare it for quilting. And Clover has a tool that you can use in your tool chest. Uh, you're going to get that. If you don't already have it, you're going to use the Wonder Pins. We're going to pin baste. This is called basting. How many of you ladies out there pin baste your quilts? Do you pin baste? So these Wonder Pins, one and a quarter inch or 32 centimeters, you get a packet of 20 pins, pink and yellow pins. Let's take a closer look. Here's what that looks like. Let me move this over so you can see. You notice it has a little bit of a curve. Let's move these here. Hola. Hello, Jesse. How are you? So glad you're here. So this is what the Wonder Pin looks like. You notice that it is fatter over here. It has a little curve, a dip, a peak, a mountain, depending upon how you look at it, in the, the, the pin itself. And then this is the front of it. The front has a little groove in it. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. I'm trying to get it just in the right position so that you can see. Here's that dip. And then there's a little area right here that it sits in. It's narrow, right? When we open the pin, this is what it looks like. We need curved pins for piece for um, basting our quilts. When we use the curved pin, we're going to push it down, go through the layers of fabric, and that's why we need to have this section where it's angled because now we want to bring it up and see how easily it comes up. Then you're going to push it down Yes, Debbie does pin base. Okay, and then you move it left and right, and then it locks in place. It's that quick to be able to to pin to pin base with these pins, these Wonder pins. Again, I'm just pushing it down, and then I'm coming up, and then I move the top portion left and right, and then it locks in place. I can do the same thing to open it. So right now it's closed. I push it down on the peak, on this peak, move it left to right, and then it opens. Once it's open, just push, push it down through the layers, bring it up, and then push the front end left and right, and then it will lock into place if you don't take too much fabric. There we go. It's that quick and easy to be able to pin base with the Wonder Pins. Just like that. Debbie, how many pins do you usually use when you, when you pin base? How many pins do you like to use? You get 20 in this pack. I love how easily it is to open and close these pins with one hand. With one hand, I'm able to do this. Just like that. And just in a few minutes, this is going to be ready to be quilted that fast. 
These are fantastic pins. You get 20 pink and yellow of these wonder pins. Specially designed. This section, again, is fatter because that's where you're going to hold it with your fingers. Your two fingers, that's going to allow you to maneuver it very easily. The wonder pins. All right, now we have just gone over several tools, wonder tools for crafting and sewing, some patchwork tools. Which ones do you have? Do you have the wonder pins? What about the clover thread cutter and pendant? Debbie has that one. And the roll and press, another patchwork work tool. Do you do a lot of hand sewing? Do you need to sharpen those needles? Then if you need to do that, you know what you need. You need the sweet and sharp macaron. Let's look at everything again. Just to quickly recap what we looked at today. We looked at the wonder pins. We looked at the sweet and sharp macaron. Those are the wonder pins. We looked at the roll and press for patchwork. Oh, a bunch. You generally put your pins in four inches apart. Okay, so you have a specific way to do it so that you get consistent results. That's good. We have the patchwork scissors. Remember, these are very sharp and good for applique. And then here is our pendant, which is so cute. I love this. And if you're looking to get a a quilting friend, a gift. This is a fantastic gift for a quilting friend. One, two, three, four, five. Which one did I forget? Uh, there's one more. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see. I have one more that I did not. Oh, it's the thimble. Where is our thimble? Did I put that? Oh, here it is. Here is our thimble. So if you're just joining us, these are the clover tools that we looked at today. Which ones are in your tool chest? Here's the thimble with the metal tip, the rolling press, the thread cutter, some patchwork scissors, the sweet and sharp macaron, and then the wonder pins. Let us know if you have any questions about any Clover tools. We are here to help you have the right tool to help you have fun and to complete those projects with ease using Clover tools. We have uh, Alina, I think, is in the Clover YouTube chat. She's ready to answer any questions you have about Clover products. And those who are watching on the replay, welcome on the YouTube channel. You can leave comments below or questions that we will also answer. And if you're not a follower on the Clover YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button. Subscribe to the channel so that you can stay updated with all of the Clover tools for both sewing and crafts. Quilting as well. You know I love quilting. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Those who are watching on Amazon, thank you. Do not go away. I will remain here. We're going to look at some more tools. If you don't have any questions for my friends on YouTube, um, let us know also if there is a tool that you would like, like for us to go over at the next live tool chest. Is, is there a Clover tool that you want to know more about? Do you want to know how to use a specific sewing or crafting tool that you have in your tool chest that we haven't featured yet? We will be back here the second Wednesday of February. If you're not familiar with the schedule, let me put that up for you. We will be back February 8th. Again, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 2 p.m. West Coast, Pacific Time. 
come back and join us for Tool Chest on February 8th. Same time, YouTube channel as well as on the Amazon Live. If you want to get the tools that you saw today, go to tools.livingwaterquilter.live. There's a live carousel right now with all of those tools so that you can add them to your tool chest. I am so glad that we had this time again together to talk about tools that make crafting fun and easy. I'm Geraldine Wilkins, the Living Water Quilter. Um, thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Jesse, for being with us on YouTube. We will see you next time. Okay, so Debbie has a question. Is the roller and press equivalent to finger pressing? That's a good question. Debbie, I do not think it's equivalent because we're going to actually press. Let me go to the overhead camera. I'm going to go back once here. When we're using the rolling press, it's finger pressing, yes, in the sense that you're not using um, heat, but you're using a tool to help make the, the pressing um, better than if you used your finger alone. When you're using a finger in conjunction with this tool, you're going to be able to press nice and evenly because of the roller. If I'm using my finger, it's likely that I'm not going to press it correctly and evenly, and I might not stay on the seam. With the roll and press, you're going to be able to go very evenly because look at the, the width of this section here. It's about the size of your finger, but it's going to be smooth all the way around. Our fingers have a contour. So it's going to, when we use our fingers, we're basically only using, I believe, just a small section of our finger. With this, you're going to use a wider section when you're pressing. And then you're going to use your finger to help that. So in a sense, it is finger pressing, but it's going to be more accurate pressing because it's going to be wider and cons more consistent over the entire seam that you're pressing. I hope that helps. It is equivalent in the sense that you're not using a hot iron or steam. You're, use a, you're using your finger to press, but with help. Help that's going to make the finger pressing better. Does that help, Debbie? I hope that was explained well enough to let you know why you would want to use this tool and have it inside your tool chest. It's going to go over the seam more consistently. All right. Let me know, Debbie, before I sign off on the YouTube channel. I'm glad to answer any other questions if you have any before I do that. That is why I am here. I'm here to help you find tools that are going to work for the projects that you want to complete this year. And you want to have these at the ready, at the ready. There's nothing like having a project and you need that one tool and you don't have it. <laughs> that's when you decide to use uh, something else that's not really appropriate. <laughs> and we can get in trouble when we do that sometimes. All right. I guess there are no more questions. Thank you again. I will see you next time for another tool chest with Clover. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. And to my friends on Amazon. I will continue. Do not leave. I will stay here to answer more questions. But we are ending this part of the Quilt Conversations Live tool chest on the U YouTube channel. See you soon. See you next time. Let's see. For some reason, it doesn't want to... All right.